I am taking a quick stroll through what I believe to be one of the most underrated neighborhoods in Denver. Talk a lot about neighborhoods on this channel, the ones I really like, the ones I don't like so much. And in this video, I wanna give you five of the neighborhoods that I believe, in my humble opinion, don't get as much love as they should. These are neighborhoods that are well known. None of them are under the radar neighborhoods really, but some of them don't get talked about quite as much as some of the other marquee neighborhoods in Denver. And in many cases, the things that they offer are almost as good or just as good as some of these top tier blue chip neighborhoods. And in these neighborhoods, I'm gonna talk about five different neighborhoods that I think are the most underrated in town. A lot of the time you get way more bang for your buck. I'm talking hundreds of thousands of dollars cheaper than their more well thought of brethren. This in terms of housing prices. So. Let me go back to the office and break it down for you. Okay, so the first neighborhood, and that was the one I was just gallivanting through, is Jefferson Park. So Jefferson Park is this interesting little slice of Denver, kind of just to the south of Low High, just to the east of Sloan's Lake, and just to the west of I-25 and downtown-ish. It's interesting because as you may have noticed, Jefferson Park is right really in the middle of the action. It's right in that central Denver area and on the western flank of central Denver where everybody wants to be. Western side, close to the mountains. Not everybody, not everybody wants to be there. There's a lot of great eastern neighborhoods too, but obviously a very popular part of town, and yet Jefferson Park kind of flies under the radar. And I think the reason for this is because the neighborhood itself doesn't have a whole lot in it other than houses and a park, the aptly named Jefferson Park. But it's not like it has its own street of bars and restaurants and stuff like that, shops, art galleries, whatever, anything that makes a neighborhood a neighborhood more than just a collection of homes. Jefferson Park itself, mostly just a collection of homes, but, it is adjacent to numerous neighborhoods that have all those neighborhoody things I was just talking about, and it's very adjacent, meaning it's not like you even have to get in a car in a lot of cases. Jefferson Park is very small, so depending on where you are in it and from most places in it, you can walk to all the good stuff in Lohi. It might be a 15 minute walk, but it's a walk nonetheless, or you can take a really quick drive and park, or get on one of those scooters and almost run into a car or something like that, whatever happens there. Get on one of those, head up to Low High, have dinner and some drinks, and back to Jefferson Park. And the types of homes in Jefferson Park are very Low High-esque, meaning it is a blend of old and new. You have some old ranches, some Victorians, not as Victorian as like West Highland gets, but some of that architecture. But really, you also have a lot of the newer ultra-modern townhomes and duplexes, the three, four levels, rooftop balcony, mountain views, that whole thing, very low high ask, except in price. And this is really the great part about Jefferson Park. Prices are way cheaper than you'd find in Low High. Take Low High, median home price right now, $925,000. That's over the past 12 months. Jefferson Park, 722. 200 grand cheaper for being just down the street a little bit. Love, love Jefferson Park as a place to live. Okay, number two underrated neighborhood, North Park Hill. The North is an important distinction because if you know anything about what's been going on around Denver, Park Hill as a whole has had a moment for about mm, the last three, four years. And South Park Hill in particular is still having that moment. South Park Hill, one of the greatest neighborhoods in Denver. I have said this before, I'd put it toe to toe with Wash Park in almost every category. It's not quite Wash Park, but it has a lot of similarities. Maybe it's 91% of Wash Park. You don't have the park. Well, you have City Park right across Colorado, which is, don't shoot the messenger just as good as Wash Park. But we're specifically talking about North Park Hill in this video because of basically the same thing I described before about Low High in Jefferson Park. You have an even more extreme example of that going on in North Park Hill and South Park Hill. So line of demarcation between the two really depends on who you ask, but officially it's 23rd. 23rd Avenue, everything is south of that is South Park Hill, everything north of that is North Park Hill. And then sometimes north of MLK gets recognized as a third sub-neighborhood, Northeast Park Hill. That always, to me, has just been part of North Park Hill, and that's how I'm gonna discuss it in this video, because otherwise it's getting too granular. Anyway, the median home price in South Park Hill, $947,000, okay? Million dollar houses, you could get it if you've been there. The median home price in North Park Hill, just to the north, 596. 
Are you kidding me right now? That's 350 grand, basically. And yeah, there are differences, okay, between these two neighborhoods. And the farther north you get in North Park Hill, the smaller the homes get and the cheaper they get in general. So there's some stratification within North Park Hill as well. Overall, North Park Hill, it's gonna be smaller homes, not as updated. It depends on the block, but you're not always gonna have the same big mature trees. You don't have the same parkways that you have in South Park Hill. So it doesn't have all the charm, but that's the difference in the pricing. And when you look at that big a difference in pricing, number one, the progress is still moving to North Park Hill. A lot of these homes are being renovated when they haven't been in you know 30 years. Some of them are having pop tops or full on scrapes. You can decide what you think about pop tops and scrapes. It's totally up to you. But the point is, this is why I like it as an investment. You can get into North Park Hill for much cheaper than South Park Hill. And eventually North Park Hill is gonna look a lot more like South Park Hill than North Park Hill. And at that point, I don't know what South Park Hill's gonna look like, but a rising tide lifts all boats or some sort of metaphor that may or may not make sense here. And the neighborhood things, North Park Hill has access to all that stuff. Numerous bars, restaurants are within North Park Hill itself. You have access to the 23rd and Dexter shops and restaurants where you have uh, the Park Hill bookstore, you have Honey Hill Cafe, which people love. You have the Cherry Tomato, which is one of the best restaurants in town. I don't wanna hear any different. And exclusive to North Park Hill, you have a newer development on 29th and Fairfax. You got a nice little park there. There's a coffee shop. There's a long table brewing, which everybody loves. I've been there a number of afternoons. Great way to spend a summer day. This is all right within your lovely community of North Park Hill. Get in while the getting's good. Now, neighborhood number three is gonna follow the same theme as these first two. And then my last two neighborhoods are gonna follow kind of a different theme, different structure altogether for why I think they're underrated. So we will get there. But first of all, neighborhood number three on the list, you've heard me talk about it before, Rosedale. I love Rosedale so much, I made a whole video just devoted to that, basically yelling at the camera and saying, hey, why aren't you people paying attention to this neighborhood? Because same thing as the other two. Platte Park is just to the north. Platte Park, very high dollar neighborhood. Rosedale has access to all those things and even has more parks and green space than Platte Park does and the difference in median home price. Rosedale, right at 700K, Platte Park, $950,000. That's a quarter million in spread. Is Rosedale Platte Park? No. Is it still a good neighborhood? Yes. Can you still walk or bike or scooter thing to the old South Pearl business district? Oh yeah, baby. Do not sleep on Rosedale. One of these days, they're gonna be saying, wow, Rosedale really blew up. Rosedale it didn't used to be much of anything. And now it's, it's the house has cost this much and this and that. And you're gonna say, yeah, I know. Cause I've been watching and listening to Sam and he told me this was going to happen. So we bought in Rosedale or considered buying in Rosedale then. And we knew. Number four on the list of the most underrated neighborhoods in Denver, Virginia Village. Okay, so we're moving to the southeast of town here. And Virginia Village, probably the most under the radar, I guess, of all these neighborhoods. Even though it's not, people know what it is, but it's not talked about in a trendy way like these adjacent neighborhoods I've been discussing. Uh, Virginia Village is just kind of off on its own. Median home price, $649,000, which coincidentally is very close to the median home price in the Denver Metro as a whole. So Virginia Village gives you a great median to be in Denver for what Denver offers as far as buying a home. And really, it's just a nice neighborhood. It's a nice city neighborhood. It doesn't feel like the suburbs, so it still feels like you're in a city, but it's definitely quieter than some of these other places. Like comparing Virginia Village to Jefferson Park, big difference, Virginia Village, you got a great chance to get a lawn and a yard and that whole thing, a lot of ranches. If you're looking for a mid-century modern home, this is one interesting thing, um, there are not too many pockets of town where there's a lot of these mid-century builds. Virginia Village is one of them. So if you're like, I am an aesthetic person, I need that mid-century modern build, Virginia Village will be one of the neighborhoods you're gonna to wanna to look at. Not a ton going on as far as nightlife. It does have Esters on Holly, which is one of Denver's, I would say, most underrated local institutions since we're on that theme. A few other spots here and there, the Cherry Creek Trail runs through it. It's close to Cook Park and the Cook Park Rec Center. It's just a nice place to be. If you're not chasing a scene at all and you wanna get an affordable, decent house at a solid Southeast Denver neighborhood. Virginia Village is worth looking at. And last on the list of what I believe are the five most underrated Denver neighborhoods, Lodo. Yes, 
lower downtown. For those of you who don't know, Lodo is our epicenter of downtown, which is the epicenter of Denver. And some of you are going to say, Sam, you're crazy. Are you kidding me? Lodo right now? Oh, Lodo, since COVID is dead, there's nothing going on there. 16th Street Mall sucks, which is true. Uh, and it's under construction, also true. Uh, well, the homeless is out of control. Mm-hmm. I'd push back on that one a little bit. Lodo, why would you ever go there? Here's the deal. You're still downtown in one of America's great cities. And I believe the demise of downtown Denver has been somewhat exaggerated. It's got some challenges. I believe the city's working through those challenges. Homelessness is an issue, certainly not an issue like it is in some of these cities, San Francisco, Seattle, Portland. I don't believe downtown is overly unsafe. And when they're done with this 16th Street Mall revitalization project, God willing, it might not suck. And here's the thing, obviously living downtown ain't for everybody. Median home price, $522,000. Why? It's mostly condos, okay? And a lot of smaller condos, one and two bedrooms, are factoring into that median home price. But the truth is, I've said this for the better part of a year, you can still get a screaming deal in downtown Denver right now because of those factors I mentioned before. The only question is, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think the fact that downtown is a little bit not as good as it used to be right now, do you think that that is going to continue and that will be the trend going into the future? Or do you think that will change? Personally, I'm betting on downtown. And so for that reason, I think you can get a good deal right now. And also, let's not forget, it's still a cool place to be and hang out. If you're someone who wants to be in the middle of the action and craves nightlife and those sorts of things, or even just likes the vibe of an industrial loft, downtown is a worthy place to hang out. And I talk about 16th Street Mall all the time, but let's not forget about the good parts of downtown Denver as far as shopping and dining go. Larimer Square, yes, it lost some anchor tenants, but Larimer Square is still one of the best places to go out in Denver. Union Station? Are you kidding me? Union Station right now? I did a dispatch episode on Union Station not too long ago. Some of Denver's best restaurants are in Union Station. The vibe is great. They're doing another project in there soon. Don't know how long that's going to take. But even with that going on, Union Station is a cool feature of our downtown. You got Coors Field bleeding into the ballpark neighborhood. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's as bad as everybody says it's gotten. I spend a fair amount of time down there. And I think overall people just like to complain. Lodo, go see for yourself. And since I did this video, I do feel it's incumbent upon me to also do the most overrated neighborhoods in Denver. So I will be coming out with that one soon. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Sam Newman, I am a Denver real estate agent. It's my goal with this channel to be kind of your go-to guy for anything real estate. Uh, would love to work with you if that's the case. Have people reach out all the time. It's my favorite way to get in touch with new clients. So um, there's a bunch of different ways to reach out. Would love to talk to you. Otherwise, I hope this was helpful. We will talk soon.